Hey guys, and welcome back to EchoCast, the official EchoCraft podcast that still does not have an intro, but I think I did pretty good there, so <laughs> we're just going to keep it. Lucid, hello. Um, we are being joined by Lucid again, who's been on the podcast a couple times. Already. Every time. No, no, right? there was no me and Lagging did I'll... the last one together. Oh, oh but, trying to give himself. Yeah, this is this is episode way. four. Um, but yeah, you've been on every other one, which is, I, I, yeah, it's pretty cool. You've been a pretty yeah, regular I mean, I, person I, on the I podcast. I really try to miss them, and you just won't let me. I really. <laughs> 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 you just can't stand me, but somehow you still keep getting roped into like, these. You put up those, you put up those like those meetings, uh, thing, the lettuce meats, and and every single time I'm like, what times could I choose that would be the most inconvenient times? And somehow or another, I, I, I get I get I get sucked right into it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have a lot of stuff going on on the Echocraft server right now because season four is just finishing up. Um, I finished all my videos. I know you have. Um, I think we've got like one last event because Lagging's got a mini game that I'm really excited for. But other than that, the season's ending. And as we're recording this, we start recording up season five tomorrow. So things are, yeah, things are getting, things are ramping up over here. They are. They're going in a very new direction, and we're extremely excited about it because uh, I feel like I feel like this has been a long time coming. Honestly, it, feels, mm -hmm. it does kind of feel like that to some degree. Um, we're hoping everybody yeah. enjoys it like as much as we are excited about it. So what's so obviously you haven't been making craft videos in a while. What's what have you been kind of doing for your channel? That's a great question. Um, well, I had a formula down pat, and I had I had been working on videos to kind of get them in play, uh, to 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 make you know the the channel as active as possible, um, and with everything that has went down, uh, Eckercraft coming to an end, and kind of getting some servers on the side set up for some friends and stuff like that, I've been focusing a little bit more on the YouTube short realm until I can get. Uh, uh, until I can get something set, because I've been doing a lot of uh, been doing a lot of uh, exploring exploration of Chat GPT, and it has been it has been so interesting. I I love it. I really do. <laughs> I love the idea of using Chat GPT to come up with these really weird, funky ideas. Number one, it's trending on YouTube. It seems like you just put chat gpt told me to do this and uh and it's just it's something the algorithm loves it man i don't know what it is i don't know if it's like a conspiracy or what but i love <laughs> it youtube loves it and it's fun it's 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 wild to get involved with so that's kind of what i've been doing i've been trying to explore those things while also prepping for season five okay yeah i've i've got plans for season five but like more down the line um, I've, everyone in the Discord right now is sharing ideas for um, their starter bases, and they're like figuring out where who, who's all going to be neighbors and stuff. And I'm just going to be like, I'm just going to hop on the server and just kind of wing it. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I don't have any solid ideas for a starter base. I know la this last season I did a Hobbit hole, and that just kind of became my base for the whole season. And I don't really want to do that again. I really do want to make a starter base and a mega base, <clears throat> excuse me, lay down the line. So I've, I haven't put as much effort into thinking up a starter base because I, because I feel like I just liked the idea so much this last season. I just stuck with it. I just didn't do anything else. <laughs> I think a lot of us just got kind of stuck in a rut for season, uh, season four. And I think a lot of it was just because of that mixed direction that we had. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we were, we were trying to capitalize on it as much as we could. And I think that's where I got stuck. Like I had, I had plans to build on top of that mountain, um, big time. I had actually stuff that I had done in my test world, um, that I really, really did like a lot. Um, you Which know, where I would basically, yeah, like right above my base. I'm like a lot of people didn't even know where my place was at, which I kind of liked <laughs> as an introvert. <laughs> I, I only but, uh, knew how to get there from the Nether, but yeah, I I had no idea where your base was. <laughs> yeah, it was like um, so honestly, I was kind of on the same Y level as um as Soli, a little underground uh cave thing or whatever you want to call it, 
And so it was basically underneath that or like not underneath that, but like to the side of that. Like, so if you, if you found the central location between Sully and where ZL's little villager area was, right. And you Mm -hmm. went directly to the middle of that and you went all the way down to the bottom. That's where I'm at. And I had this okay. little hole that I could get down as quickly as possible. I can fly up. Oh as wait, was as that possible. by the little, the tiny little four by three gold shop? That. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I, I remember seeing that. Shop. Yeah. Yep. So that that hill right there, that mountain, whatever you want to call it, that was where I actually had uh, intentions to to build uh, not really a mega base, but kind of just transform the hillside. But between. The Dong, uh, the Dongzi, uh, uh, whole ordeal, and um, see the the warden stuff, and then just you know, it all kind of caught up, and before I knew it, all the plans that I had made just kind of seemed like it was a little too far out of reach, and so I kind of just let it go, and I'm like, you know, when whenever we were all talking about let's play stuff and all that, and I'm like, you know, this. Maybe it's best just to wait um, and, and get a solid foundation to build on. No pun intended. So yeah, that's what I've decided to okay. do. I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna leave all that ambition, store it, use it as a creative outlet in preparation for season five. Okay, I think one of the one of the biggest disappointments of season four for me was actually we never utilized that mountain island. I know that was like the one thing that made me really vote for the seed. Like I didn't care too much for the mainland. Like obviously I think it's kind of cool that we, we decided to do it on a kind of a bigger Island and all decide to kind of stick together. So um, I kind of appreciated that, you know, as we started playing, but when it actually came to the seed vote, um, yeah, that, that big mountain Island with the kind of basin in the middle, I was really thinking we were going to turn that into a, a group project, like a, um, you know, like a shop area, like a maybe an underground, like Lonely Mountain type shopping district. I thought I I had a lot of cool ideas, and I I really thought people, other people had ideas too. Because yeah, no one ever really did anything. Sassy's got like a half blown up Trojan horse in that basin now, and uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I felt like there were a lot of uh, really good ideas for that season, and. And I think that just the difference of direction for a lot of the uh, echoes just kind of caused a, a a divide, and unfortunately, that divide favored one side over the other, and mm-hmm. uh, that's just, that's just what happened. Um, I guess that's divide what I in say. divide as in like content styles, not like we can't yes, stand each yes. other. <laughs> no yeah, like, like we, 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 we all we all we all <laughs> we all played a lot together. That's the fun. That's the funny part is like we all played a lot together and we had a lot of fun and all that. It's just. It, it 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 just seemed like it was favoring one side and not the other. I suppose is the way to look at it. And you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but we just want to kind of change that. We want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Everybody is kind of getting the kind of content that they'd like to get uh, off of the server um, in regards to you know for their YouTube channels. Because that's kind of ultimately what well, that's the whole point of the server. You know, it's a content mm-hmm. creator exclusive server. So we get we got to get content, and so if, we just want to capitalize yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah, we we love everyone that's been on the server, but we're we've all we've all just Besides decided Miles, to. We don't like Miles. No, yeah, we, we hate him. No, no we, <laughs> we just don't like that guy, man. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think if, I think it's his face. I think that's what it is. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but that's kind of what I'm going for. I think it's his face. Yeah, some something about his face is just it's it's it, it's, he... it's too beautiful. That's what it is. Like that's what it really comes down to. It's just it's it's too it's too perfect, and I don't like it. <laughs> Uh, you guys aren't in the Discord, but we actually do have a timeout corner for Miles. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't even remember the context. We I were just I, in a. I think we were I in a meeting. On a whim. <laughs> we well, we were in a, a voice call, and then um, I think as some, I, I I don't remember what happened, but it ended up turning into someone made a channel called Miles Timeout Corner or something like that. And and then you booted him over to that voice channel. You like physically moved him as the admin or something like that. It was, it was yeah, so funny. It, it was worth it. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, love so, yeah. I, lo- I love me some Miles and give him crap for something that he may or may not have done and having no, no remorse. It was the roof, wasn't it? It was the lack of roof on his base. 
I can't remember. No, he like he just we did we I think at the time you know Winslow wasn't controlling his his miles, um, and so you know action needed to be taken, and that's exactly what we did. We took action. Um, we 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 told Miles like, listen, you man, you just until until Winzo you know does his job properly, you're just gonna have to be put in your corner. Here's your corner. Have fun. Yeah, yeah. Control your miles. That was also a thing that just kind of came out of nowhere. We've had a lot know. of inside jokes that just haven't made it on camera. Really, it's so fun. Oh uh, yeah. Well, it, it's 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 so funny though because a lot of it just comes from just Miles being so Miles like. <laughs> He, he, we would look like legit be doing something with the donkey thing or, or something along those lines. I think what really kind of like stood out for a lot, uh, for us, especially Chief, whenever everything was getting started, is uh, me, me, Chief, uh, Winzo, and um, Soli, I believe it was. We were, we were, we were meeting up for like doing an emergency meeting, and Miles just happens to walk through. And we were like, we were like, keep on walking. And it's in, it's in Chief's video. It's, it's honestly, it's a beautiful moment. He goes, Miles, can you hear me? And then there's like this, like awkward nope. silence for like three <laughs> seconds. And then out, because we're using proximity chat. So it's like, it does sound like he's far away. And he goes, no. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah, it was just, it was the beautiful. The distance it makes really it was. so much funnier. Yeah, I dude, I it really does. Oh my gosh. I, Branzi told me. Um, he, the video he made where he basically just took like the world file or whatever. Um, oh yeah. Right at the end of the video, he went around like bragging to other people. He was like, look at this guy. He has no idea what just happened. And like me and Wenzo yeah. just happened to be online at the same time. And I, I was just sitting on the couch. So I didn't have a microphone, but I did have my headphones on and I did have voice chat up. So I could hear him because he hadn't muted his game. <laughs> and so and so he I just I just typed in chat I was like I can hear you what have you done and he told me afterward that, he, that at that moment he was like yeah this is the best moment of my video he told me he was like you made the end of the video just like so much yeah, better <laughs> it, 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 it's really weird how those what would normally be very I think that really comes down to uh, you know how uh, how good chief and Branzi are as storytelling like mm -hmm. they take these moments that we accidentally create and they 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 turn the they turn them into like this really like I, i'd even go as far as like artistically created um comic uh comedic elements in the in the video you know what i mean mm -hmm. and, and and they do it so beautifully and it's so funny like like just the way they do it like it's something that i'll probably never be able to do i mean i i think i've done like ones where i was so happy with it um and the other times i feel like i've tried and i was like only like semi-successful but what like uh, really embracing yeah. something that was like unscripted or on un yeah unplanned. yeah like exactly you know you're you're taking something that you, you should like in in, in most situations is going to be just extremely mundane and you turn it into something that makes not only the video worth watching in general, but just like something where even the people who were involved when they watched the video, they're still laughing because it really was just that funny. You know, it was mm -hmm. just, yeah. Oh man. It, it's beautiful. Like, like, like a uh, chief's uh donksy video, you know, I was literally, I was the other half of the entire story. You know what I mean? Like I, I was, um, I, I was, I was there. I was behind the scenes. I was the one, you know, moving donkey around and trying to play, uh, play devil's advocate or whatever the case may be. And even when Chief's video came out, man, I was like, I know what's going on. And he somehow still had me sitting on the edge of my seat. It's like, how, mm -hmm. how do you do that? Like, how, how do you, how do you basically trick somebody into liking something when they already know the outcome? And I think that's just where it comes down to good, good storytelling. Um, yeah, that's yeah. just something that Chief and Brandsy are just really, really good at. Um, and I think their videos and their their video views clearly, you know, uh, like like they they don't they don't have to rely on on um you know fancy editing if they want to. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like like so, like you know they they don't sometimes. Sometimes they don't rely on fancy video editing. Sometimes they do. You know, just kind of. I think it just. Whatever the direction they feel like going, but it, it does speak volumes, in my opinion. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I, I really, yeah, I really like that. And I really want more just natural interactions to happen this season. Cause this last season did feel kind of scripted at least, at least like certain people, um, like Brandy, like chief kind of had these scripted ideas. And even though if the recording and execution of that was, uh, had these random moments in it, it didn't, I feel like very few of us, like on on my end, were really just kind of doing things just as a let's play thing. If you know what I mean, like it's oh yeah yeah yeah. It kind of it kind of goes back to that trying to oh I smacked the microphone. Um, <laughs> trying to go back to the finding finding an identity um, because yeah, once once everyone had a bunch of different recording styles, it, it really did just kind of yeah. Like we love each other. But it did hurt the server quite a bit, um, and so we're trying to fix that a little bit. But doesn't mean we're not friends. Doesn't mean we're not gonna be in the, each other's videos because um, we'll definitely still. I'll I'll definitely still try to make up opportunities to be able to record with mm-hmm. people like Ramsey and Chief that aren't aren't joining in this season. Yeah, and hopefully, oh, yeah. Ho- yeah. Um, and hopefully, we can see some some people come back eventually. But yeah, it doesn't mean doesn't mean we're not talking to each other. It doesn't mean we're not doesn't it doesn't mean we're just abandoning <laughs> friendship. It's like, oh, you're not on the server? Gone. Be gone. You're you're out of my DMs, unfriended. <laughs> oh, I still plan on doing that. I thought that's the, that was the plan. Like we're not we're not just, you know. Maybe with Miles. Maybe, maybe, Miles. maybe with Miles. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh Lord. Well, Outside of Acrocraft, I guess, Minecraft has had a pretty interesting week because 120 is out now. I haven't touched it yet. Um, and the first time is really going to be tomorrow. I mean, I've messed around a tiny bit with hanging signs. I don't even remember why. Uh, I, yeah, I messed around with hanging signs just a tiny bit in the creative world. But other than that, I haven't, I haven't touched 120 yet. So it's going to be super exciting for me because um, I really want to mess around with like the sniffer the new flowers i really like i really like the um the idea of like new plants and stuff so i don't know have you messed around with 120 at all is tomorrow gonna be basically your first nope. opportunity i i've been planning my starter base for season five and i mean i guess i guess it depends on what you how you define uh, messing around because uh i i i mean i have technically been in to 1.20 for a few hours but i haven't done any of the actual mechanic the new int- introduced mechanics or items or anything like that outside of like maybe mm-hmm. bamboo and stuff like that which i love the bamboo bamboo i love the bamboo so much <laughs> the bamboo wood the Matt bamboo which is, which is interesting mad matt's not a fan of the bamboo wood um oh dude the the, the way it texture it textures so well with sand as well like it really oh really it collides really well yeah yeah even um skip uh skip the tutorial he was kind of talking about that uh today he released a video on some of the the stuff that's coming out and talking about how you know you can really mix the patterns and stuff like that and i'm like man that really does look good okay yeah i I really like it because it's very close to birch, and birch is like, I think birch is my favorite wood type. Don't quote me on that because spruce is also very, very good. But yeah, birch is birch is up there, and so it, since since bamboo is very, very close to that, I think I'm gonna like it a lot. Um, the new the texturing, like you can, this is the first time we've got like wood types that have multiple types of planks, which is super interesting. Um, because you can mix it, mix it around with like, you know, the new, the new bookshelf, like the sides of the new bookshelf also have a kind of unique, almost plank type texture. So yeah, it's going to be exciting to play around with the blocks. Um, like I said, I haven't been playing my starter base at all, so, um, I'm definitely going to wing it, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully I can use the, use some of the new blocks, maybe some cherry. I'm, I'm thinking, I, I think, I think it'd be a crime not to build some sort of like Japanese inspired um building at some point. Probably not probably not like in Echocraft, just in general in Minecraft is like now that we've got cherry wood, in in some world, whether it's in my single player world or something, I I wanna make make like a Japanese style um building with like, you know, the the roofs and the kind of spiked corners and stuff. 
We gotta do something for pandas. What about what about pandas? We gotta do something for pandas. Gotta do how something for a, pandas. I, I, yeah, how can you have bamboo stuff without doing something with pandas? I guess that's true. Yeah, no, I guess. No, 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 no. You don't guess. We know. We know. It's just it's it's it's, it's pandas. You gotta do something. I'm honestly with not sure where you're going with that. I'm honestly confused. Because bamboo, bam, bamboo and pandas, they're like go one in hand, they like, you know, hand in hand. Mm hmm. So you so, use bamboo to make like a panda kingdom or some crap like that. Okay, know. okay, okay. Now, okay, I get it. I, 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 I couldn't, well, I couldn't understand you. <laughs> well, I, I couldn't understand you a tiny bit the first couple times you said it. Uh, cause the discord glitched out a tiny bit. So I was just a little confused, but I'm, I got it now. I got it. <laughs> cool oh, story. I'm offended. <laughs> Not really. Good. <laughs> <laughs> every, every I moment I have to annoy you is, is, a, is a moment. Oh, I'm going to get you back in season five. You just wait. <laughs> I I do have some I do have some plans with some of the 120 um mechanics to mess with people and I'm really excited to get into it. Uh-huh. Um you say that like you're expecting me to tell you like uh-huh, yeah. What? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, uh -huh. just active listening, man. That's what I'm good oh, at. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, the, the, just the way you said it sounded like okay, you're going to tell me or you're going to tell me how you're going to mess with me or again. Yeah, not telling you. Nope. I want that to be a surprise. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it should be. Hopefully, it should be really, really fun, especially right at the start when everyone's really close together, and so you get a bunch of interactions. You don't have to. It's not suspicious at all if you're if you're over at someone's base, whereas it might be in later parts of the season when everyone's really spread out. You know, there's kind of a different vibe you get with with that. All right, we we, we have a topic that we need to talk about. Okay, go shoot for it. Shoot, I don't know. Go for it. I tried to, I tried to combine go for it and shoot, and that did not go well. Anyway, I think it sounded great. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, you got the topic. Keybinds. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Lucid was setting his keybinds before before we started, and you've got some interesting choices. So, I only heard one. And that C for crouch? C for crouch. Why? I mean, I've heard of it in in certain games. I I think. Oh, I don't. I don't. I think Portal might have that. I don't know if Portal has that. But if it did, I'd quickly change it to shift. Anyway. Uh. What? Well, some of my keybinds don't make sense to just about anybody. To be completely honest with you, like. Um, in certain games, uh, melee for me is T. T, um, T what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it, it, like, it's like it's like in FPS games, like yeah, yeah, like in Destiny. Okay, that or makes more. Like that. that makes more sense. That makes more sense because like in Halo, I've got. I think well, the default for Halo is F for grenade and then Q for punch, but I've swapped them so that Q is grenade because that's just like. It's like throwing something in Minecraft um, is is Q, so I just kind of match that up. But yeah, that that makes more sense. That makes <laughs> that makes more sense than using T to punch something in Minecraft. No, 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 no. Because like, well, like in punching, like if, if if punching in the game is just a click, like you know most games is, then absolutely not. No, I'm just at that point, I'm just you know just clicking. But um, if you know, by happen chance, you know, I'm playing a game that has like a designated melee button, like maybe like a zombie game or something. I don't know. I always bind it to T. It's a very strange one. I get that. But the reason that I did it is because back when I first got my first PC, my first gaming PC, that is, um, the game that I got really heavily into at the time, um, it was just, you know, just time of the, the video game to release and all that, uh, was Ark Survival Evolved, uh, okay. which, I mean, the game itself wasn't new, but it was the game that me and my friends wanted, like, get a server and play together. And so 
I didn't have a preference because I just started playing on on mouse and keyboard. I didn't have a preference. I mean, this was years ago. This is probably oh lord, eight nine years ago at least. Um, okay. And so I didn't I didn't I didn't have a preference at the time, and so I was having to learn the key bindings. I didn't even think, hey, you can change the key bindings. It didn't even dawn on me, and. I don't know if it still is. I'm pretty confident that it is, but the default for melee in um, in Arc Survival Evolved, which you know technically you do with just clicking, um, but it was T. I'm pretty confident. Maybe it's not clicking. I can't remember. Maybe that's just mining. Maybe actual melee. I can't remember. I remember there being a game. I'm pretty sure it was like Survival uh, Arc, but the binding was T. And so now, you know, my, my, my melee has always been T ever since then. Um, and then I do the same thing with every game that I can think of off the top of my head. Crouch has always been C because it makes sense. But Minecraft is that one exception, it seems like. And so I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. We'll do crouch on Minecraft as well. So if people ever see me crouching, I'm like holding down, you know, my crouch button, you know, trying not to fall off a ledge. Just remember that I'm not mumbo and I'm not like doing this like weird, <laughs> you know, like hand twist thing. You know, thumb I'm semi normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a semi normal. Yeah, his thumb shift that that right there. That's some next level. Like, I don't know, man, like. Thing is, is I guess it's like when you get used to it, you're used to it. So why change it up? I guess it's kind of like mm-hmm. their their mindset, and I and I get that. Definitely get that. Yeah, I switched in in Minecraft console edition. Um, basically the the sticks you click in the sticks, and the left stick is to switch the camera like f- to third person, and then the right stick is to crouch. But I got the game like after I'd been playing Breath of the Wild for like a month straight. And Breath of the Wild has crouch on the left stick, so I, I swap those. So I, I'll do, like, little ones like that, to base, sometimes based on, like, other games I've been playing, and it just feels more natural. Um, but for the most part, I keep I keep the basic um, basic keybinds. Um, yeah. I do. So, so in Minecraft, I've got F5 paired to R um, because that's just... It's just way, way closer. So I can, if I just want to go into third person for like a talking to the camera view or something like that, or if I'm playing, um, if I'm playing a PVP game in a high pixel, I need to like look behind me really quick. I've got, I've got that. But other than that, I play Minecraft normally. I'm like, I'm like you apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, My keybinds really aren't that strange. T is the only one that, um, like, are, is it kind of strange? Now you go into Destiny, and my keybinds are definitely strange in comparison to most. Okay, like, so so what's what's Destiny? Because Destiny is also it, it, Destiny was made by the same guys as Halo, so theoretically it should have pretty similar controls, right? <laughs> not i mean it's a first person shooter so i mean yes but also kind of no it's it is made it so so you know just to clarify halo the franchise the good part of the franchise was developed by bungie (laughs) yes the bad crappy parts were developed by 343 industries independently um as far as i know at least yeah Um, basically I, I have stopped playing the Halo franchise. Pro- the last one I played was Halo Infinite, I believe. I can't remember off the top of my head. It was the one that introduced the alien race um, in which were like uh, metallic robot glowing orange dudes. I can't remember. Oh, no, that's, that's Halo 4, the Prometheans. The, the Prometheans, thank you. Yes, I've, yes. The bullet sponges I've heard of heard him called <laughs> yeah yeah that was the last one that i played and i think the reason why i really stopped playing halo is because uh halo 3 was my baby like i played halo 1 and i played halo 2 and i liked halo 1 and i liked halo 2 but the game was always evolving in a good way like they would keep the things that the players liked and they would get rid of things or they they, they would they would keep the things that players liked and then they would evolve on things that the community was asking for like for instance Halo 2 had custom games you can make custom games and custom you know and 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 custom maps with forge and stuff like that or no no you couldn't do forge could you do forge halo 2 i can't remember now 
Uh, I feel like Forge, you Forge was a Halo 3 thing. That was a Halo 3, yeah. So it got introduced to Halo 3, which is great. And then, like, the issue is, is, like, you can only use these objects... You know, you can you can line them up next to one another in Forge, but you couldn't you couldn't fuse the items together, so to speak. Which I mean, in in Bungie's defense, that wasn't. I'm sure when they were the. I mean, as somebody myself, like put myself in their shoes, I wouldn't have thought like, hey, let's allow them to be able to fuse items together. Nobody knew about that. Nobody. It wasn't. It wasn't even a concept that had been talked about, as far as I know. So. It wasn't a big deal, but then all of a sudden, you know, this was the time where these files were stored on the Halo 3 Forge servers, and you could download custom maps and stuff like that, similar to like how you can do on a lot of uh, first-person shooter games at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and so, the the maps, these new maps were getting downloaded, and people had figured out how to, f you know fuse or mix items together to create unique shapes basically to create these really awesome racetracks or these really really trippy like uh parkour maps and etc cetera, etc cetera. i mean the list just goes on and on it was just it, it it became almost like the minecraft of non-minecraft you know like it was like yeah. minecraft but in a different game you could do you get the, the the possibilities were borderline limitless like you didn't have the big worlds like you have in minecraft but you know you could just mix these items and make them look so unique and so artistic while also being really really compelling and fun and you can mix game types with them it was beautiful but the issue was is that when you in order to and i actually remember this so so vividly because i remember when i learned how to do it I was I, I was hooked. I was sucked. I was uh, even though I was terrible at making the maps, I absolutely adored the process. Um, and basically, I don't know if you know anything about this, but just a little bit of Halo Three Forge history here. Um, basically, what you would do is you would place an object, okay, mm -hmm. and uh, you would place that object, and say you wanted to fuse two containers together to make like an L shape. Um, and your idea was eventually to make like this curved ramp for like a, a, a warhog or something. So basically what you would do is you would take the two objects or you would take the one object and you would put it in the map and then you would save the game. You would leave and you would come back. Then you would grab an, the object that you wanted to fuse. Now this is the part where it gets really, really finicky because everything had to be timed perfectly. If you, if you were holding, if, if you were holding the object and you saved it and you quit, while you were still holding the object and then you came back into the game for whatever reason the game would not load that object initially like i think it was like a solid like 10 or 15 seconds before the game would actually load said object and hmm. so you had to hurry up grab the piece remember exactly where it was at it was a very tedious process and you had to like hold it in there and you had to hold the object and wait for that object the the previous object to load and then when it loaded it would fuse the two items together you could let go of it and it would stay you would save you'd quit you'd come back in and now the two objects are fused together if you picked up on if you picked it up it would break it it would like you know push us they, they would push themselves apart and the issue the i don't know if you can tell yet but the issue with that process is is it took forever to for fuse objects like you would literally have to if if it wasn't lined up right or whatever the case may be you had to dis d detach the object and then try to get remember exactly where that object the 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 original object was placed and then you had to save and quit while you're holding it and load back in and jump right back in and go back in there and place the other object and hope to god it was lined up and if it wasn't you had to do it all over again it was a very tedious process but there was something about it that just struck the community like a bolt of lightning and so when halo see it's halo 3 halo Halo Reach, was it? I think it was Halo Reach. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Halo Reach. They came out, and they evolved on it. I was not a big fan of Halo Reach, for the record. However, I adored the fact that Bungie listened to us. They said, we we, we understand what you're wanting out of this. We're going to give it to you. They allowed us to have the objects in two separate modes, transparency and solid to where if you wanted to you can fuse two objects together by literally toggling it in and out of uh, of, of solid mode and it made making maps a million times easier in comparison to halo 3 and so halo 3 was my baby that was the game i spent countless and countless hours matter of fact i got so into that game i would create an account 
go play BP PvP, get up to level 48, 49, 50. I only got to 50 once, but if any of you all out there that are listening are huge Halo 3 nerds, you will understand why 48, 49, 40, 48, 49, 50 were such a huge deal. Like, if you came up against somebody who was like a level 48 or higher in PvP, unless you just knew that you had the skill level for that, you're probably going to get owned. Simple as that. Like, the skill level, the, the, the rank actually mattered, in, uh, unlike most games these days. Um, but basically, the, you know, kind of cut myself off here because I'm kind of starting to ramble. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I spent countless hours in that game. And um, and I just, I kind of stopped playing it because... Um, I don't know. I don't know if it really was because Bungie left and started working on Destiny, you know, in the background, or if it's. I, I really don't know exactly what it was, but I, I really do. There was something about jetpacks, man. When they introduced those jetpacks and all that, it just killed the game for me for some I know, reason. Yeah, I know armor abilities are have been kind of controversial, um, because you got. Well, I I really like messing around with the invisibility one. That's fun. Uh, I like <laughs> I like going around with the invisibility one, and especially in something like capture the flag to try to try to sneak in the base or or melee people in the back or something like that. But yeah, I haven't. I've only started playing Halo in the past like two months or so, um, so I'm still relatively new to the game. Um, I think we were talking before the podcast a little bit, but I've I haven't actually finished combat evolved yet the the campaigns i'm actually going through the campaigns with another one of my friends who's never played played them before and so we're, we're playing through them together um which is super fun sometimes scheduling is a problem which is why we haven't gotten through ce yet but yeah it's it's good i really i really like it so far i did i got the master chief collection on sale which was really nice i think it's on sale right now i just saw for like nine bucks or something like that because microsoft's doing a doing a sale so if anyone if anyone wants to pick up halo now's the time to do it um on steam at least i'm not sure if it's it's the same on xbox um but yeah, i was about to say like are, are you talking about on pc because if you're talking about pc i've got it i've got um <clears throat> excuse me i have um what you call it uh the master, chief, master collection. chief collection yeah dude i'm not getting we should play that, that like, sometime Oh, that? dude, I, 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 now I only play Halo 3, Halo 1, or Halo 2, and I don't play any of the other ones because, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of them. Um, mm -hmm. But, I, yeah, I absolutely adore them. I, I really do. There's, there's just no other way of putting it. Like, I absolutely adore those games, more specifically Halo 3. Matter of fact, I'll even go as far as to say that um, I have played Halo 3 so much that if you said, hey, Lucid, we really need to like sit down and, and, and you show me all of the little mini secrets to the game, dude, it's going to take a whole lot more in scheduling to get all that time in because there is so many little hidden Easter eggs I'd want to show you all the way down the line. It's ridiculous. Like, do you know, have you heard about the, okay, this is what we called them, the Chuck Norris, um, uh monkeys in the very first mission 117 sierra 117 of halo 3 oh yeah 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 i've seen them yeah <laughs> freaking yeah, wild dude no no this okay okay oh, all right listen i you know you all had your freaking star wars moment the other uh, the other week i'm about to have a freaking halo nerd moment here okay um, I'm, I'm fine joining <laughs> on that like i said i'm, okay. I'm getting into it <laughs> <laughs> okay so there is this one chuck norris monkey Okay, I'm calling it Chuck Norris. In all honesty, it really, he really doesn't look like Chuck Norris. I don't know why we thought it looked like Chuck Norris because the monkeys don't really look like Chuck Norris that much. But that's it's just what we call it for the whatever devs, reason. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's something weird. But <clears throat> basically, long story short, at the very end of the very first mission of Halo 3, Sierra 117. There is this dam that you come up on, okay? If you're familiar with what I'm talking about, you poke or any of the listeners, then kind of follow along mentally here. You're going, you're going, you you reach to the dam, you jump off the cliff, and you go down. And you're killing all the covenant. And you're running around. You run across the dam. You're killing, you know, the 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 um the chieftain that has the hammer. You get all that knocked out. And then if you do a full C on the dam, like you go to the other side of the of the of the dam, and you go all the way to the end where that one chieftain's at with the hammer, 
and you kill everything in the area, there's this like one corner. Okay. It's, oh my God, it's so strange. I want to do it so bad because it just is so nostalgic for me, but you get into this one corner and we used to call it two player jumping. Okay. There was, I mean, everybody, uh, it, there was a lot of different terminology for the different types of jumps. Cause there's so many different types of strategies of jumps within Halo three. But the one that I'm talking about, what called it two player. And the reason why is because you literally had to have two people. You could do it with three people as well, but it seemed only consistent with it seemed really consistent with two people basically the concept was is one per one one person stood right in the direct corner and they had to look as center into the corner as possible and then the other player would jump on top of the first player <clears throat> and then the person on top would jump and then you kind of had to just time it when you're on the bottom but you would basically jump I, I've whenever before, they're at yeah. their peak yeah and then the person on top would have somebody to jump off of at that point so then they would jump and i don't know why and this is why i think that bungie literally put something in that corner because i don't know if you can even execute this in any other corner in the game it's only in this corner for whatever reason but there was just it was almost like bungie literally made and developed the game in specifically that corner for us to figure this out because if you did it right like the, the the wall was really high even with a two player or even a three player jump jump there's no way you we we you can you can look over on the on the roof there but you can't reach it and there was no mantling system so you have to get your feet above that ground there's no way you're going to do that even with a three player jump but for some reason if you just literally mashed if you were on the top and you just mashed a as much as you possibly could after you did the two player jump and you had your angle perfect it would literally just climb just climb like like almost like skyrim style up a mountain kind of climb where you could just sit there and jump constantly and the game just recognized it as you turn into god and flying straight up basically <laughs> It only worked in that corner, but basically, long story short, is you would have to like work your way around on these all these like you know invisible barriers and work your way up back up towards the uh, the front of the dam where you came from, and on top of the hill there there was um you know there was like all, all, it was like tucked away it was like I can't remember if it was one monkey or a family of monkeys. It's a family of monkeys. It was just one. Well, no, there, there is, there is earlier in the mission, there is this part, part where a bunch of jackals are sniping you out, and you go up on the trees and, and tucked in the corner, and there is a family of monkeys there. But there's, there's technically two sets of monkeys, basically. Oh. One, one is not a glitch at all. It's just there. You just have to climb the trees and get to it. It's not glitch or anything like that. You just got to know where they're located. The other one is actually, I don't even know if you want to call it a glitch, but it was up there. There. In all seriousness, Bungie might have put a more official way of getting up there, and we just never figured it out, or maybe somebody did figure it out, but because it was so lame in comparison to the the jumping situation that nobody even recommended it, I never heard of it. So if it exists, and you know somebody wants to prove me wrong, please go in the comment section and call me out. I would love to hear it because I would love to know that I did it the hard way for literally decades. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess not literally decades, but borderline almost decades, considering how long the game's been out at this point. But, um, yeah, no, it was just, dude, like, I, I like, I, I, that game, I, I don't know why, it just made sense to me. Everything about that game just made complete and total sense to me, and I got sucked into it. It's probably one of my favorite games of all time, 100%. It's one of those games where... I can go back and play it on the Master Chief Collection on PC, and I don't want to play, like, serious. I want to get on there, and I just want to do, like, infection game-type modes and, and stuff like that. That's all I want to do. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I just... Uh, the infection game-type modes, man, they were... They, they they were the time for the boys to get together after school and, and, just, and just play video games, like all night if we could um and it was it was an absolute blast and and the fact that bungie took the time to put easter eggs in there like the developer put i, I don't know who it was i want to say it was a team lead at the time but they literally took a picture of the guy with oh, his oh, as, uh, all, jason all, jones all, only his boxers like he only had his boxers on and they took a picture of him and on the very very last mission before you got you got all the snow and you go into the covenant uh, structure and you would normally have to turn left well there was this there was this um ledge that was tucked away over this death pit 
and you had to do like a gr a grenade or a rocket launcher. Well, I think it had to be a grenade because you didn't have a long rocket launcher that early in the game. Um, but you had to do a grenade jump, and you had to get the timing so perfectly. But if you got it, you would literally bounce around. You would actually be able to guide yourself around the corner. And there was just this really pitch bat black ledge, and behind the wall was just a picture bouncing. It was just, it was, just, it was just, it was just like a, it looked like a, like a 64 by 64 pixel picture with terrible resolution, and it would just sit there and bounce. And it was literally, it was one of the the de the dev team members. I don't know exactly who it was. I never looked it up, but um, he was just a picture of him in his boxers turned around like facing away from the camera and if i remember correctly he had his arms like up and his hand behind his head and that was it like that like was dancing it. or something like that or no like I, I i you have to look it up like if okay like, let, let me see if i can find it on youtube i'll send it to you and then we'll let people everybody like you know tell the people on youtube what to go look up it's not explicit for the record i don't want everybody thinking oh he's uh, he loose is telling us to go look up a guy and nothing but his <laughs> boxers on youtube that's not what i'm trying to say it, it is what i'm trying to say but it's not explicit <laughs> it like, it's, it's, it, it's not explicit at all it's actually really hilarious and it, and it made it into the game it's it was it was fantastic fantastic um halo 3 bouncing uh picture uh i'm i'm pretty sure the guys at bungie made microsoft um start the whole easter egg uh, made microsoft make a rule that meant they had to sign off on every easter egg because i don't think they did anything explicit but like microsoft was worried like okay the there's there's stuff in the game that could that could get sneaked past until launch and then back then you couldn't update it and so they're afraid of like maybe other teams on other games doing doing stuff and doing doing bad things so i'm I'm pretty sure that was kind of what made them think is like okay this could turn into a bad thing so we're gonna we're gonna make easter eggs have to be passed off in the future I mean, yeah, like there, there's no telling. Which is uh, good. Exactly. It's it's good because, yeah, if if Halo was made by any other people, um, then yeah, it could it could easily have gotten gotten bad. Uh, for for the for the people who were actually wondering, if you look up Halo Three heading to his destiny, James uh, Jason Jones achievement Easter Easter egg guide is uh, by a. Uh, a YouTube channel called Maca91 Productions. They have a video up on it. It's got really good resolution, but um, uh, it, it's a good video. And it, if you go to timestamp uh, about 141, you'll see it. And if you want to, if you want to see how they did it, you can start at probably like about one time step one minute and 14 seconds and they'll kind of like show you how they went about it um and they should have been doing like a grenade jump that's the way you're it's the way you're supposed to do it at least um oh my page crashed that's nice thank you <laughs> um oh actually it's further back than that it's actually it's actually back at timestamp about 50 seconds but anyways um yeah, I know it was that was that was my jam, and I, I like I said, I just I know all all the hidden skulls are. I know where all the Easter eggs are at. Matter of fact, there's even an Easter egg. I know, I know a there's a talking I, grunt, <laughs> a crap talking grunt. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. There's a uh, I think there's one that's talking about how he has um, he has Tartarus's uh hammer. He's like, I've I've got the hammer. You can I can give it to you if you don't kill me or something like that. I don't I don't remember exactly what he says. Um. Yeah, I've, like I said, I haven't played any of the campaign. I I know the story because I had a roommate that was really into it. He he got me into the, into it in the first place, and he just gave me a rundown on everything. Like his dad, his dad was a Bungie fan back in the marathon days, and ended up getting like a chance to, beta test Halo or something like that. So they, his dad actually has like a, unreleased like a like a unreleased copy of Halo, um like a dev development copy or something like that. Um, so he's, he's been in, he and his dad have been into the series since it started, uh, basically. And so he told me, yeah, he told me everything there is to know about it basically. Um, and really got me into, uh, really got me to want to get into it. So, yeah, but I, I've played a lot of the multi multiplayer, um, basically as I'm, as I'm waiting to, uh, you know, in between campaign sessions with my, with my other friend. 
And so I can I can hold my own in Reach and surprisingly Halo 2. I've heard Halo 2 is apparently the sweatiest game like ever. Like Halo 2 multiplayer is like one of the hardest games ever to to really pick up nowadays now that there's people who have gotten really good at it and really know some of the some some unfair tricks. Um but some somehow I can hold my own at Halo 2. Maybe it was just the game lobbies I was in. But yeah, Halo Halo 2 and Reach are, are my best ones. I'm not not the greatest at Halo 3 and Halo 1 is just random um sometimes with some of the spawns. So it really really depends. Oh yeah, there there's there's some super sweat. I mean I I mean I'll, I won't lie like I I don't do PVP anymore. I think I might just be because of age or whatever the case may be. There's there's some there's something there that makes me not want to do it as much anymore. Um, even even in in, in in Destiny I don't really do a lot of PVP and in Minecraft I'm getting better at it in Minecraft but I don't have a desire to be better at it in Minecraft. I just kind of just do it. You know I think it's more of like just messing around with friends and trying to get better at it and stuff like that um but realistically i just don't have any use for the whole pvp scene anymore but i i'm always down to like do some campaigns and stuff like that with friends and certain games still um it's just to me it's it's a lot of fun um yeah halo 3 definitely down to like do that one now that, that's a that's a that's a, a big win for me there is there is one map I don't know what it's called, but it's basically like a, a facility in the snow or something like that. And there's a bunch of particles on the screen and it slows my laptop down to a crawl. <laughs> it is so bad. Um, so I can't, I really can't do anything in that game mode um, or in, the, in that map like at all. But other than that, I'm, I'm getting better. <laughs> I'm not the greatest, but I'm getting better. Um, I can't tell if mouse and keyboard is better or worse than than controller because generally in shooter games like in, in precision games mouse and keyboard is the way to go but halo's got like the kind of aim assist type thing uh with controller where it, it kind of guides your con it, it, you know it guides your curse your whatever is it, reticle just barely if you've already got it kind of trained on someone to kind of help you steady it a little bit so i i almost wonder if in like a in a 1v1 if that actually wins out against mouse and keyboard so um I think, I, it, uh, from from my extent, I like a lot of people. I think this is a pretty big controversy, but like, especially at least in the Destiny world, uh, you know, a lot of people like to say that mouse or that um, controller has the advantage because of aim assist. Yeah, like, but um, I've always kind of thought like if you like, like uh, I remember back like whenever I did actually play. Um, Fortnite. I mean, God, this has been years ago. I mean, this is basically this is back whenever. I don't even know. Like I don't, I don't, I don't know the timeline for Fortnite anymore. I just remember like whenever you know the the game was uh, starting to gain popularity. All my friends that I was playing with at the time before I really got heavy into YouTube uh, with like Eggcraft and all that, um, they would all want to you know play it. And I'm like, what is this Fortnite game? And so they showed it to me. And I think it was more fun because I was playing with friends rather than playing like a PvP type game or whatever. Um, it was something really fun about like the whole building or whatever, but, um, yeah, I, I PVP just doesn't do it for me anymore, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't played Minecraft mini games in a while. Hypixel just got shut down. That's something we can talk or not. Hypixel, Mindplex just got shut down, which is a little, a little sad. Cause that was like my first introduction to Minecraft multiplayer just in general. And so, yeah, when that got shut down, it was. It's kind of interesting. I know you can go and download the maps, I think. So I guess technically you could you could still play with your friends or whatever, but it's, you know, definitely wouldn't be the same experience. Um, I know there was the... Um, it was like a red versus blue game type. It was basically two sides, and every time um, you killed a member of the other team, bas basically you could... Um, the, the whole stage... I think it was like 50 blocks across, and then every time you killed a member of the other team, the your area actually expanded a block towards their side or a block or two towards their side. And you won by controlling the whole thing and you couldn't cross over. You couldn't cross over the side. So a lot of it was with bows. Um, and I know what, I think the arrows could destroy you, you. You had bows and you had like a wool blocks. So you could build barriers with, 
but like the bows could destroy destroy the wool and then like uh you could choose to spend uh if you got enough kills if you had enough points or whatever you could choose to become like an infiltrator or something like that and so you could go to the other side but you were slower uh but you had a sword so that was like my favorite game type that was that was really really fun um but i haven't yeah i haven't played minecraft pvp in a in a while um, I I, w- I would like actually kind of like to get on Hypixel, but Lucid got banned from Hypixel, and whenever he what? didn't play on Hypixel, yeah, you didn't hear. Wait, about how? Like, I I I, li- I I literally don't have an answer for you. I wish I could provide more information, but I mean, ultimately, all I know is this has probably been about a year ago, maybe a little less, but I had never ever logged on to Hypixel before. I never really had an interest in it, you know, because number one, I don't do PvP and all that Hypixel stuff, and, and on top of that, you know, like, nobody ever really invited me to play or whatever. Well, all of a sudden, it's like me, I think Mayu, Miles, Wenzo, Chief, it was a good little bunch of us or whatever. We we're gonna go play some Minecraft and just kind of chat, maybe do a stream or whatever. And, um, uh, long story short, uh, they're on Hypixel, and I believe it was, and I'm finally getting on there and getting the server added, and I log on, and it says your account has been banned. I hadn't even logged on, mind you. I double-clicked to join the server. Never touched this before on my account. And, matter of fact, I'll go even further. I've never touched this like, like this server on any account, and it just says I got banned. Like, by default, boom, just done. It does, like, huh. if you want to, if you want to um, fight it, you can go to this website. Well, I went to this website, and then it's like, okay, well, if you want to fight it, you've got to connect your Minecraft account with your account that you just created. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's do that. I make the connection and all that. I go in there, and I submit the ticket, and it just says, no, you've been banned. Like, I couldn't even fight for it. I'm like... It's not that big of a deal because I don't really care for the server to begin with. Not not that the, there's anything against Hypixel. Everybody wants to play it, fine, go ahead. You know, it's just not a server really for me personally unless my friends invite me. But we have found out that if I want to play it, I'm going to have to create a whole second account and then jump on there, you know, and try, try playing it there. And I was looking into it to find out, like, what stuff, what can be considered, like, illegal. You know, I was thinking maybe it's a data pack that I had that they scanned for, and they found it, and they didn't like it. Um, the only thing I can come up with is auto hotkey, because I do have auto hotkey installed on my system. But I'm like, I find it crazy hard to believe that they would ban somebody because of auto hotkey. And I don't know if you know what auto hotkey is, but no. it's basically just a software that you can use to create macros and stuff like that. Um, matter of fact, you know how when Winzo places lava and stuff like that, like crazy yeah, fast? Yeah, yeah. That's basically what it is. I don't know if he uses auto hotkey itself, but that's what auto hotkey would basically do for you is that right there. Um, I know there's mouses you could use to do, do stuff like that. Yeah, so I got banned from Hypixel, and I tried to fight it, and they basically told me that, oh, well, it sucks to suck, and I was like, it's not that big of a deal, because I probably will never want to try to play on this again, but if my friends ever do invite me, and they're having a really good time, then that's that's it's kind of crappy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't, don't want to miss I, out I, on it. I, I can't do anything about it, though. Like, I, like you know, unless I buy another account and play on that, which I probably will do, honestly, eventually. I'll probably just get a second account and play uh, on that account. But, yeah. Nonetheless, yeah, that's that's my story. You, use, the, use the YouTuber status. Just kind of... <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm a YouTuber. You can... <laughs> if anything, I'll, I'll, I'll use my secondary account so I don't have to worry about people. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when Lucy gets all big and famous, you know. Yeah, yeah. Unlike me, apparently I'm big and famous. <laughs> oh yeah, you big and famous. You moved up there quick. You move up there <laughs> real quick. Oh my gosh, I I am I am kind of interested to see where what happens to my first episode of the next season, because my first episode of this season did super super good, and I have no idea why. I <laughs> I, I think first episodes of like any series just do way better than other other ones just because people usually want to go back and like watch the first episode of of a given series but i don't i don't know i have no idea what happened with that video but it ended up getting probably 10 times as many views as i normally get so it's 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 going to be interesting to see if that if the same thing kind of happens with with season five or or if not then 
just why it, it just doesn't be thumbnail man I, I, I don't know the thumbnail is not that... the greatest it's it was just a picture uh, yeah. of the hobbit hole door or something like that i think a lot of it really just coming down to people are just wanting something different like youtube is so flooded with you know uh the fancy editing and and not to say there's anything wrong with that but i think it, people are finding it refreshing to find other people who aren't already big youtubers who are kind of uh trying to choose the path less taken at the moment um, mm -hmm. and it probably just stood out to them yeah i guess that's true and i and that and that gives me a lot of hope for let's play content because like I know for the longest time it was very very overdone like everyone was just and very low quality everyone was just kind of doing it to do it and didn't put a lot of effort into it but now it seems like since everyone's doing like the Mr Beast thing trying to be bigger or better and and stuff then a lot of people are are almost annoyed because they're starting to get like over what's the word um it's like oversaturated over stimuli I guess that's that's the kind of word I'm looking for. So calmer stuff like Let's Play stuff. I'm I'm really expecting it to come back in a bigger way soon. At least I'm hoping for it, but especially since I'm a Let's Play type YouTuber. Um, but just just kind of watching the watching how YouTube is has worked over the years, I really think it's it's got a good chance. And so yeah, I'll just keep what I'm doing, keep doing what I'm doing. I'm mean, not that it matters anyway if I get views because. Like I said, uh, I've, I've said this before, but I've been doing this for like seven years now, seven, almost eight. So yeah, if, if, <laughs> if I had enjoyed, I would have quit a long time ago. But speaking of quitting, I think that's just about as much time as we have in this podcast because we've been going on for, yeah, probably about an hour, 15, or something like that since we Has it really been that scheduled long? It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, wow. It, it, it's crazy sometimes how quickly it it um, flies by. I feel like that's such a stereotypical thing to say. It's like, oh, time flies when you're having fun. You know, you'll you'll hear it all the time. But um, flies especially even if you... faster when you're hating life. I'm just joking. Do you need help? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess every everyone needs help in one way or another. <laughs> it's, it's the eyes. You look at the eyes on your skin. You can tell this guy has got some serious issues. <laughs> oh yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> oh lord, oh, where does Lucid begin? <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, any last things you want to say? Anything you want to say to the audience before we finish? Mm, not that I can think of. I think I, I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully we can get another one of these out pretty soon. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed. And we will I will depending on whether Lucid comes, we will see you in the next one. Bye. See ya.